Attention LEGO fans and brace yourselves for some super spoilers coming your way. We'll start with Harry Potter as after weeks of blurry glimpses we've now got official images of 76437, collector's edition of the Weasley's Burrow, which will start us nicely before the leaks for the sets next year. It's coming with 2,405 bricks along with 10 minifigures, being Harry, Ginny, Ron, Fred and George, Percy, Charlie and Bill, and of course Molly and Arthur, Mr and Mrs Weasley. There's even Errol the Owl, which is another cool addition. There is lots of details in this collector's edition of the Weasley's Burrow, and whilst there are some stickers in the set, a lot of the elements are printed, which is certainly an advantage. Now, for those buying that at time of release, we'll also get the Weasley Clock. This isn't made of Lego, it's actually metal along the same lines as the Star Wars coins, but that is going to be the unique gift with purchase coming with the Burrow. In addition to that, for any Harry Potter purchases over $130, you'll be getting Borgen & Burke's Flu Network, which is a effectively just a fireplace within the shop, but does come with a Lucius Malfoy minifig. Of course, if you are buying the Burrow on day one, you're going to get both that and the clock. The first wave of Potter sets for 2025 have also leaked, although it's early days, so some details could change. First up though is 76453 Malfoy Manor, coming January 1st and rumoured to cost $150, coming with 1,600 pieces. It will be great to get an official Malfoy Manor after years of cool mocks. I even visited Hardwick Hall where it was filmed early this year, although I didn't realise at the time that's where it was, so speaks volumes for my powers of observation. As for which scenes will be depicted in the manor, this will influence which minifigs we get. Assuming that Harry will feature, which he almost always does, it would also make sense for Ron and Hermione, with possibly Luna and Ollivander, more likely Bellatrix and Draco along with Lucius, and maybe even Narcissa, who we only had once from back in 2011, as well as possibly Dobby and or Griphook. Then there will also be a new version of the night bus in set 76446 to replace the now retired version from 2019, this one to be 500 pieces for $50. And some more business is coming to Diagon Alley with set 76444, Microscale Wizarding Shops, this one to be 2,750 pieces. And with the 16 plus Diagon Alley set still available on LEGO at the moment, and several other sets of this location having been out in recent years, you have to wonder how often LEGO can milk this particular cow. <coughs> Moving on though to 76443, this is to be a buildable version of Hagrid's motorbike and sidecar with 660. 17 pieces for $50. This one coming from the Deathly Hallows Part 1, where they're escaping with the Seven Harrys having taken Polyjuice Potion. There will also be several sets to begin making up the new modular Hogwarts Castle, which will apparently be considerably larger than previously. Minifigures are yet to be confirmed, but we do have set names, piece counts, and pricing. The first being 76447 Flying Lessons, with 651 pieces for $80, and logic would dictate this comes with a minifig of Madame Hooch. There's also going to be 76442 Charms Class, which should feature Flitwick, and is 200 four pieces for $20. We'll also have 76441, the dueling club, for $25 with 158 pieces. Fingers crossed for new Snape and Lockhart minifigs on that one. So lots for the wand wagglers and snitch grabbers to look forward to. As for the mutants, the 76294 X-Men Mansion has had some confidential images leaked, however I'm not going to show them as the usual DMCA stuff is happening, people are getting strikes, there's already been a couple of prominent leakers who've had their main accounts deleted in the past couple of weeks. So what can be seen is that a buildable sentinel is coming with the mansion, which is going to be hinged at the back to open and close, and the minifigures that seem to be identifiable are new versions of Professor X, Jean, Gambit, Bishop and Iceman with repeats of Wolverine, Storm, Cyclops and Rogue. The studio couldn't afford another X-Man. That one's coming in November with 3,093 pieces for $330. Now, a quick update for 76292, Cap vs Red Hulk, coming in December. It's going to have a minifig of new Falcon Joaquin Torres, and, after controversy and film rewrites, Sabra. In addition to Sam Wilson's Cap, coming with new wings, and the big fig of Red Hulk. It's also going to come with a small fighter jet that has stud shooters. 
Then the marvelousness continues in January 2025. Following the Age of Ultron set 76291, there will be another diorama, this one being 76314 Civil War Airport Battle. This should include a buildable Ant-Man, although the minifigures are going to be more limited, seven in total. And whilst they're rumored, there's nothing certain as to which figures we're gonna get at the moment. The price though is gonna be $100. Then there's the buildable Marvel logo, which is 76313. This Will be the same price and also coming with minifigs. These ones being Thor, Iron Man, Cap and Scarlet Witch and there's rumours of there also being either Bruce Banner or Nick Fury, however none will be unique. And a quick reel through five more being 76307 Iron Man Mech vs Ultron for $15 which will be cool to get an Ultron minifig again and these are rumoured to be comic book based. Also 76308 Spider-Man Mech vs Anti-Venom, same price, and 76 76309 Spider-Man vs Venom car for $30. There's 76310 Iron Man and Black Panther vs Red Hulk for $35, also with comic book based minifigs apparently, and 76311 Spider vs Miles vs The Spot for $40, with minifigs of Miles, Gwen and The Spot. This is the first set we're getting from across the Spider Verse, which is cool. There will also be the final battle from Endgame for $100, coming with several minifigs, the known ones currently being Falcon, Ant Man, and the Wasp, and a new Iron Spider and it's going to come with several buildable portals. There's also going to be another Iron Man armor haul, slightly weird after the poor sales from the last one, this time with four minifigs, Iron Patriot MK1, the MK42, Pepper Potts, and Aldrich Killian. There's also going to be a new Igor build that you can put one of them in. That's going to be $55 or so spring of 2025. Now for the Bricklink Designer program and uh, LEGO Ideas. First up, the five winners of Series 5 have been revealed, which I've done a detailed video on, link in the description below, but they're the Thieves of Tortuga, the Mushroom Village, Antique Shop, the Amazing Adventure in Transylvania, and the Popcorn Wagon, crowdfunding for those being June 2025. And as for LEGO Ideas, the 80s Challenge, two winners were revealed as being the Goonies, which is just an amazing set in my opinion, and also the Buildable Gizmo, which is going to be fun to get too. Switching to Disney, so far the sets for January are princess based. There will be a buildable Cinderella dress for $40, likewise a two pack of Cruella and Maleficent dresses for $70, and there will be a twirling aerial for about $10, similar to the twirling Rapunzel. Also a buildable Hey Hey, the chicken from Moana, and there's going to be another Encanto house, but in micro scale for about $40. If those aren't enough for you, you'll be able to bag another small frozen castle for circa $30. Yes, another. Seriously, Lego, just... Or else a larger Cinderella's castle for $80. And if those don't do it for you, maybe the 4 plus Frozen sleigh ride will. Most promising, however, is Lilo and Stitch's house, which is rumoured for the second half of 2025, priced as $90. Piece count to be confirmed, but looks like it will come with minifigs, not mini dolls. Moving to Star Wars, there's a bit more info on sets coming spring of next year. Ahsoka's Jedi Interceptor from the Clone Wars is to be 75401, with 290 pieces for $45, and should come with a new younger Ahsoka minifigure and Astro Droid R7A7. 75402 is of course the ARC-170 fighter with 497 pieces for $70. The last time we saw this ship was 2010, when it had three minifigs and a droid, so a expect something similar, and it should prove popular if done well. The buildable Grogu in his floating pram is set 75403 and is going to be 1,048 pieces, priced at $100. It's also to come with a minifigure. We'll just have to see if this is going to be a repeat of either Grogu or Din Djarin. There'll also be two more additions to the midi scale Starship collection at the start of the year, with 75404 being the acclimator. It's at the smaller end, $50 for 400 150 pieces and 75405 home one with 559 pieces for $70 and let's not forget the 4 plus Mandalorian N1 fighter with 92 pieces for $30 which is likely going to come with a Mando minifig to make it even remotely reasonable price wise. 
Also in spring, we will see the return of the Helmets collection. This is confirmed, but it's not certain what they'll be yet. Rumours put the first two as Bo-Katan Kreese and Django Fett, though I am taking that with a pinch of salt currently. There is also going to be a buildable chopper droid coming in 2025, which will be similar to the now-retired 75187 BB-8, priced around $100, the exact release date to be confirmed. On a very different note, the new board game Monkey Palace is available for pre-order, being released in October, and the good news for fans of LEGO board games like myself is that several more are to come over the next few years, with the next being Brick Like This, a family party game for up to eight players coming next year in 2025. So that's it for this one, but there's loads more to share, so make sure to subscribe and I'll be back with you soon.